On hearing the Vice wrote an article about my video on Australia Day, this was my response. Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Shouldn't have done that! Vice guide on how to fall flat on your ash. Sorry, I just really need to save at this moment. <sighs> okay. First line. Australia may have its own Logan Paul situation brewing. Boy, clickbait sites don't fuck around with the clickbait, do they? In case you don't know what they're referring to, YouTuber Logan Paul earlier this year wandered into the Japanese suicide forest, hoping to find a dead body, found one, and then filmed it. Which is a bit odd that Vice is upset about this when a few years back they went into the Japanese suicide forest, hoping to find a dead body, found one, and then filmed it. The only way you could possibly say that Vice was any more respectful than Logan Paul as they weren't wearing a Toy Story hat. Yet in terms of moronic statements, Vice is just warming up because remember, this is the first half of sentence one. I've rarely seen anything on the NetBears universally shat on as this think piece that by the end, and keep in mind, this article's about me. I was rooting for them. I was thinking, oh look there's one that supports Vice and no, that's just sarcasm. Oh dear. Yet the author Liam Armstrong, the Rebecca Black of journalism, goes on to write, As backlash grows against friendly Geordies, for his hot take on the hashtag change the date scenario. Which was so intimidatingly huge that my likes on Facebook went up by 3,000 and on YouTube it got about the same dislike ratio as my video on working at a bottle So for those of you at home keeping a track of the irony, we're now at a tally of two and we're still on sentence one. The YouTube celebrity argued there's no need to change the date because no one in the country is celebrating a genocide. They did it! Vice finally achieved its dream of becoming the new CNN as they seem to think that the point of journalism is to just fucking lie. My comment about there being no one supporting the genocide wasn't in relation to me saying that there's no need to change the date, Liam, which I never said. So I think we need another tally board, don't we? It was actually in relation to clickbait journalists, yo, and Twitter addicts, double yo, blowing the change the date debate way out of proportion for no reason other than to sell advertising space to companies that are destroying indigenous land. Which boy this article entitled, Friendly Geordies equates Triple J to the group behind the Rwanda genocide sure blows that theory out of the water. But just so Australian McLovin here gets the message that was trying to be conveyed, let's bring it down to his level. Hi Liam, over here. Hi sweetheart. Today we're going to learn what a joke is. Ooh, it's a big word, so let's use a visual. When I play a chopper reed flag waver, that doesn't mean I don't want the date change. That's what's called a character. It's make-believe. Ta-da! I'm not actually a woman. This was my actual position on changing the date. Obviously I don't care. I'll celebrate it then. But until that day, fuck off Surrey Hills and Ultimo. Your putrid fog of bank-funded hypocritical flip on a dime hashtag indignation is blocking the fireworks. Which by the by, not caring what day Australia Day is held on was a view many of these click sites proudly touted as exceptional news. Truly a reason to party like it's the end of Return of the Jedi, including Vice. Until someone with that exact view pointed out that these click sites changed their position overnight for no moral reason, purely to protect their image, Vice hashtag changed the position. Overnight, for no moral reason, purely to protect their image. Funny how Liam didn't mention the second half of that sentence at all in his, for lack of a better word, article. And don't worry, mate, I'll fill in the gaps. I'll explain exactly why you didn't, but that's going to come much, much later. Because there's going to be no quick execution for you, Liam. In the words of the eternal Paul Keating, I want to do you slowly. Jordan Shanks goes on to say that the two Aboriginal guys I know, one who didn't give a shit, the second who didn't give a shit either, he just wants a day change because his grandma feels sad about it. Which is a point that anyone who didn't have a point but was angry anyway latched onto because they're, well, Liam and friends. Mentally too, and speaking of two, they seem to have left out the beginning of that sentence, just by accident I'm sure, which was from my extensive research of asking the two Aboriginal guys I know, let alone mention the tonality it was expressed in, which was Ooh, the time to bring out the keys already again is it Liam, slow learner. That's okay, here's a new word, sarcastic. 
Don't worry, sweetheart, you'll be able to recognise it when you're mentally five. The reason I asked my Aboriginal friends and then invited anyone who was Indigenous to comment below is because of something called... Genuine inquiry. Because, you see, it's alright to have disagreements. Here's a guy that made a video about my video who disagrees with me. Link in the description because that's called... Discourse. Something which these Twitter worshippers purport to care so much about. Yet when my Indigenous friends, or the majority of the Indigenous people that commented who expressed an opinion that doesn't fit in with the narrative that these self-proclaimed guardians of virtue, aka cunts from the inner west that have done more names than Steve-O, when they hear an opinion that they don't want to hear come out of an Aboriginal's mouth, apparently that view isn't valid. Wow. Six points of irony and we're at sentence three. Then, right after scoffing at me for including the opinion of two indigenous people, quite tongue in cheek, mind you, as supplementary evidence for the bigger point of my argument, Vice goes on to include, get that counter right back, two indigenous people's opinions as their only evidence for their argument. Two. <laughs> If you really notice, there's two points of irony here. So to quote Yilmaz, Double up, boys! Friendly Geordie, she's a joke. Yep, that's the point of a comedy channel. Good on you for being inadvertently correct. That's a victory of sorts. Polynesian Aboriginal writer Enoch Malangi. Writer. That's a bit of a stretch. Enoch goes on to dismiss the only opinion poll conducted purely on Indigenous people's opinions of Australia Day as not being representative of Indigenous people's opinions. <laughs> Which, gee, I wonder if he'd think that if the poll found what he wanted it to find. There's no actual information on how many Indigenous people answered the poll. It could have been 10 participants for all we know. Um, pretty sure we could tell it wasn't 10. I don't think someone's arms and legs could agree with changing the date, but their head and torso be against it? 54% doesn't go into 10 very well, matey. Former UTS Student Association Indigenous Officer Matty Norris also weighed in, telling Vice that Shanks is highly insensitive and tone deaf. This said, of course, after writing the tweet, This time of year is too fucking exhausting for proper discourse, so I'm gonna cut to the chase and say that Friendly Geordies is a fucking grog, and I genuinely hope he gets wrong. Charming. I mean, she's right. I'm a massive cunt to people I even remotely disagree with and I say way harsher shit than that all the time. So Maddie, wish away. But your point that you should be speaking about Aboriginal if you clearly know nothing about was kind of included in the video and by kind of, I mean, clearly was almost verbatim. As if as you was so fucking exhausted. From what? Being on Twitter all day? former UTS Indigenous officer. I took it on myself to look at what experts on Indigenous affairs actually think about Aboriginal issues. And by expert, I'm using a slightly tougher criteria than vice for looking for people who are actually, I don't know, employed. People such as professors in Indigenous studies and the 185 peak bodies in Indigenous controlled organisations that, surprise, surprise, seem to agree with the general thrust of the video as they're not Stupid. The Liberal Party relocating 2,000 staff in the Indigenous Affairs Department, cutting Indigenous funding in the 2014 budget leading to a breakdown in services to remote communities, the highly successful Indigenous Rangers program due to those budget cuts being on life support, the fact that the work for the Dole program that the Liberals initiated doesn't work, the Liberals not properly investigating child abuse in jails would have continued if they weren't voted out and replaced with a Labor government, the Turnbull government refusing to engage with Indigenous leadership and purposely stalling constitutional recognition for the Indigenous population, which even if you're going to argue that symbolism matters, to which I I'd argue that being able to hear probably matters a little more, but maybe you should be arguing for the symbolism, which nice little side bonus, also gives the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders a legal framework to exist under and according to polling, the vast majority of Australians agree with. 72% of us agree with constitutional recognition, and oh that's right, sorry, I forgot that polling doesn't mean anything unless it agrees with you. But if you did poll the Indigenous population, you know, just for fun. On the central point of this video, which was clearly articulated and everyone with an IQ of over 70 seemed to understand that if these click sites and the audio equivalent of listening to someone masturbate, Triple J, if they care so much about Indigenous affairs, 
Why didn't they push for a Labor government even one one hundredth as much as they pushed for the rescheduling of a barbecue? Why don't they point out that their fucking sponsors push indigenous people off their land worldwide and exploit indigenous land rights in this country right here today if they care about anything other than fucking brand deals? If you ask the indigenous population of Australia, do you think these hipster media outlets give even one one millionth as much of a fuck about you as they do the show Girls? I bet you all of Logan Paul's fortune that the number of indigenous people that agree with that question would be a little lower than 54%. Because these imaginary divides that these drains on human consciousness feed off of like white versus aboriginals, men versus women, gays versus strange. is actually just a smokescreen designed to distract us from the real cultural divide in this country which is all of Australia versus you fucking hipsters. Hipsters who seem to think that Kendrick Lamar saying bitch too much is more important than kids in Arnhem Land going deaf. And even though I've never addressed that point and admitted it in the video, you Maddie seem to think that a crowdfunded YouTuber who consistently pushes for that very change in government that would have addressed all of those issues, and in many cases solved them, is a quote, Gronk, what are you in year eight? While you, the pinnacle of morality, have a dirty little vice. Siding with the shame porn owned by a man who not only got the Liberals in, kept them there, dismantled our national broadband network that might have helped remote indigenous communities out just a little with providing health and education services and hell, even given them an opportunity to read your poorly thought out tweets. Yet that's who you choose to roll with. Vice. But he saves the majority of his scorn for the Australian media. So Liam admits that scorn of clickbait sites is the major point of the video, and yet in his article it receives half a sentence. If friendly Johnny really wanted to partake in any meaningful conversation surrounding this day, he wouldn't compare the genocide and ongoing dispossession of indigenous people globally. Why? Because the guy who didn't know that 54% doesn't go into 10, yet said I should quote, get my facts right, without listing a single fact I got wrong, said I shouldn't? Um, that's okay. I think I'll go with a slightly more credible source like, I don't know, an actual writer? Someone like genocide historian Daniel Goldhagen who says you absolutely should compare genocides because it reminds you that it could have very easily been you in Guatemala in the 70s. Which is why when you tweeted, Beyond just how generally hateful and racist the friendly Geordie's video was to indigenous people. Yeah, we're not doing that. Imagine how clueless you must be to think that the breakup of Yugoslavia is a good example of how chill everyone is about ethnic cleansing now. Oh, so I'm not an expert on indigenous affairs, which I agreed to and admitted in the video, but you're an expert on the Balkans. Very odd conclusion to come to when what I was actually saying was that because Goldhagen told me that the other reason you absolutely should connect genocides is so you notice that there's patterns. Patterns such as the fact that all genocides are always political. And as such, I don't blame the Serbian people for the genocide. I blame Slovodan, his wife, and the Slavic version of Bill O'Reilly. As such, I'm glad they're proud to be Serbian and I'm more than happy to break bread with them. While you, on the other hand, another living saint, is proud to appear in a publication that's funded by intergenerational robbery and pushing indigenous people off their land to make sugar cane and palm oil, pretending it doesn't exist in order to pump out mind mush articles about how the biggest injustice on earth is fat shaming so their audience continues to eat even more sugar cane and palm oil, but they get a free pass according to you. And yet I'm the joke. Wow. Hipsters really are the kings of irony. So Liam, I may use costumes from the reject shop, but at least I'm not a reject. I don't want these three stooges sent a bunch of hate mail. And I don't think you're a bad person, Liam. I just think you're so vacuous and dumb you make Cardi B look like the Dalai Lama. This is what happened to you, son. Your dregs of humanity editors of Vice wanted to take a swipe at me, but they saw what happened to Mark D. Stefano when he tried to have a go, and because they're such snivelling cowards, they threw you under the bus to take the heat. So fuck. Not only do they not care about indigenous people, Vice doesn't even care about its own employees. And they really, really don't care about you, Liam. Jesus, you think about that the next time you're looking at your editor in the eye discussing what story to do next. Um, I think we should totally write about Australia and Canada's wine war. No one gives a shit. Why don't you do a story on your bank buddies loaning to mining companies that completely ignore indigenous land rights, steal 80% of this nation's wealth? I mean, I might be confused here, Liam. If you care so much about respecting the indigenous community, wouldn't you be writing articles about how your bank and mining mates are significantly lowering their life expectancy and, oh, that's right, you clearly fucking don't. Oh my god, I'm not going to 
using the little article about what Murdoch did to Vice, link below. You see, Liam, it's not that hard to share the love. And I'm not a purist or a saint either. I've got no issue at all with entertainers taking corporate money. Clearly. Because that 80s show isn't pretending to inform the world. Vice is. And that's some scary shit. I even understand why Labor, the Greens, Hell, even Bernie took some corporate money because it's a necessary evil and once they're in power they institute policy that's in the public interest like carbon and mining taxes. I.e. they use that dirty pay to make those companies pay. That's some pretty fucking judo boss shit. You use it to talk about anal beads. You use it to trick people into caring more about eating their own vaginal juice than public policy and yet you call yourself fucking news. So to prove that the biggest joke of all is that a loudmouth with a shit Kmart camera in his house who actively tries to be a joke, who just like you guys, pretends to be the news, dresses in shit wigs, yells in stupid voices, is sadly a far superior source of information to all these purveyors of written sewerage combined. I'll say it right now. Rupert Murdoch is the worst thing to happen to Western democracy since Warren Capper ran for mayor of the Gold Coast. Links in the description as to why. Your big bank mates, Liam, are going to be responsible for more human suffrage than every genocide in human history combined. That's why you should divest to a credit union. Links in the description. People think I'm funded by Labor? Fuck, I wish that was true. I'm actually 100% crowdfunded. Thank you so much to all the Patreon donors. And the proof? Labor's refugee policy is terrible. They supported intervention in the Northern Territory for way too long. And Bill Shorten has the head of a midget. Try saying the same thing about your sugar daddy, Liam. Write an article on why your editors report more on how sexually pleasurable it is to piss yourself when they do their bosses' links to the NBN or any of the aforementioned issues surrounding your sponsors and see if your editors, or more accurately, your pimps, will publish it. No, I just want to move to London. People understand me there. What do you reckon the odds would be at the TAB that that's his life goal? 50 to 1. Please press the subscribe button now. Come on. Mitch, Mitch.